Uh, today we have Kavita here uh, and Kavita is going to discuss uh, bite registration so for a well we have a partially dented patient here but this would um, actually be the same for a fully dentate so uh, Kavita say if a patient come to see you for a new set of dentures whether they're partial or full dentures uh, what are the type of questions you might ask your patients? Or ask um, mm -hmm. if they really want dentures, if do they function mm -hmm. first or without dentures, and yeah. if they want replacement, uh, if they've had dentures made before, mm -hmm. and if they have, if they're old, or what mm -hmm. they don't like about it, is it something as simple as appearance, just mm -hmm. the shade they don't okay. like, mm -hmm. or is it a fit, okay. or if they're difficult speaking or eating, mm -hmm. it's just asking them really important questions of okay. what they don't like about the dentures. I think that's a really good point Kavita has made, because you need to know what the uh, original problems are with the denture, because if you don't then what are you going to fix uh, obviously if the patient is just wanting a new set so if the original set say a full denture is really good and comfortable and you've done all your checks and they seem pretty reasonable you could always copy them couldn't you yes. um, and that copy denture technique you can discuss in another video um, but say if we were making them a new set and there were certain characteristics of the original set that the patient was happy with then we can actually copy that uh, and that would go for what like size and shape of the teeth maybe yeah. and things that fit generally the dentures fit well it's just that they're worn mm -hmm. but everything else is good it's, that's one of the indications for copying dentures okay so um i've always told kavita that uh, when the patient comes you have to do all your um, all your measurements first on the first day with the original dentures in place and then obviously do them without them so can you just tell our followers what are those measurements that you would do um dr gore is really like zones is the fact that you need to check OBD mm -hmm. and RBD at every appointment mm -hmm. from the first point when you do the exam before you even take primary impressions mm -hmm. or anything like that check OBD check RBD mm -hmm. um, if the patient has existing dentures with the dentures without the dentures and then you take it every appointment to make sure that measurements all line up and then mm -hmm. you might need to even take an average yeah um, and the reason we check um, the RVD um, uh, originally and the OVD is because we want to see how much freeway space there is so um, uh, because as you know <laughs> uh, RVD takeaway OVD is freeway space and on average the freeway space is how much two to four millimeters two to four millimeters okay and you don't want to make that freeway space bigger or smaller if you make it smaller uh, what does it do it affects what speech speech yeah. it affects the phonetics of the patient and it can affect chewing so i'm sure some patients have come in to say when i eat my i can hear my teeth clicking together that's because there's a lack of freeway space if you increase the freeway space and make it too big what happens patients overclose thank you if the patient will be overclosed and it gives them an appearance of an old face correct so you want to make sure you stick to the correct dimensions so um, after you've actually analyzed the old dentures well and you've analyzed the in intraoral um, of the patient so the ridges and uh, you know to see how much ridge you have and to decide what type of denture you're going to make and um, the reasons why the patient is going to change the denture and the, and the things the patient likes about the denture, then you take your primary impressions, okay? So what do we use for primary impressions? What do we use? Alginate, yeah. Think? Yeah, so we, in our practice, we use alginate uh, because the uh, alginate gets poured up on the same day. Uh, so it, it will be dimensionally stable because if alginate is poured up straight away, then it is stable. If you don't have alginate um, and your lab is not going to pick up on the day, then what else would you recommend they could use? If it's a dentist, you use the mm -hmm. Okay. Or silicon, otherwise. Or composition, if you have composition in your practice. Um, then obviously those um, have to be, you can alter your tray your denture tray with green stick which we can show you in another video how to do that because <laughs> we can show you that Thank you. <laughs> and then um, we can then uh, show you how to alter the tray so you can get better primary impressions okay so say you've taken your primary impressions and you've um, sent them to the lab for some special trays uh, what kind of special trays do we ask for perforated special trays yeah good again why 
so the material is yeah because we use alginate again we use alginate um so again the green we use green stick to alter the special tray so we can get um especially for the lower ones uh, because normally we find the extensions of pores in it and lo lower ridges could be very resorbed so we need to alter the special tray um if you again don't uh, have um uh, uh, you know the lab pouring up the alginate straight away then you do need to use zinc oxide eugenol and then ask for non-perforated trays okay so uh once and then we are also ask for wax rings so these are some occlusal wax rings which we've actually uh got back from the lab okay upper and lower this patient's actually a den a partially dentate and um we um together with um kavita um today we did um, a jaw registration for her uh for her and um, basically um what we've done is this tooth is broken but um we found that um she had a point of reference here with this original tooth and here so we managed to keep that point of reference and um, we increased her freeway space by two millimeters, didn't we? Um, and gave her a little bit of an open bite. And we also um, did um, some, uh, put some more wax labially. So when she has, um, she'll have a better lip profile. Um, once um, we we did um, the jaw edge one at a time. So best thing is to try the top one in, um, in the mouth first and uh, then do all your measurements according to the merit of the top uh, wax rim and make sure that that fits well make sure that um, you've got the center line marked and you've got the wax trim to the correct labial uh, uh, profile that it's got to be then you have to then put the lower one in and uh, do the same thing and then once that's done, you put both in together to measure your freeway space. Now in this, um, uh, and measure your OVD. In this situation, we actually did some markings. Um, so when the technician puts it together, he'll know that all these markings have to go together. What is the other thing we could use um, instead of marking it? You could um, cut, cut grooves. Cut notches them, into them. Zinc oxide and put zinc oxide in there. So um, Kavita has now written her um, lap sheet um, for this patient and next time would be a try-in and we will then see if things will go well. And you took a shade as yes, well, I did. didn't you? Yeah. Um, you can also do a Facebook record, um, uh, which we'll go through it later, how to do it. Um, anything you want to add? No, I think you covered it all, Dr. Cole. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't want to do this video. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thanks, Bruno.